The bracelets of handcuffs hurt the wrists of Mr. Reed's hands, but he remained silent and still stubbornly stared at the gray walls of the policeman's office. The policeman insisted on repeating his questions about the reasons that had prompted Mr. Reed to start a fight on the bus and injure the two young men. The elderly man was tired of answering the same questions, so he just kept quiet. At this time, his memory involuntarily took him back to his own distant past, when he himself was young, and his future life seemed to be full of the brightest prospects. Mr. Reed grew up in a small provincial town in an ordinary working family. His mother worked as a saleswoman in a grocery store, and his father drove a truck. The father had served in a war zone and told his son a lot about the war. From an early age, Mr. Reed was imbued with love for the military, the strong and fearless men who defended their country and pressed him with their courage. As a teenager, he dreamt of becoming a professional soldier and was crazy about military service. So Mr. Reed paid a lot of attention to his physical skills and invariably performed to the highest standard in physical education. He was sure that he would serve in the Air Force, and he wasn't mistaken. He really was called up to the Airborne Forces. Before leaving for the Army, he made a party and invited his friends and his girlfriend Evelyn, whom he had dated for three years and whom he was going to marry after the military service. Evelyn cried and vowed to wait for his return. At the very end, the party was slightly overshadowed by a little incident. Mr. Reed had a fight with his best friend, Parker, who was four years older than him and was already in business. The young man got a little tipsy and called Mr. Reed a fool, saying that nowadays normal, intelligent guys do not go to the army. Of course, Mr. Reed was hurt by his friend's words. He couldn't take it anymore and punched him. A fight ensued, which was barely broken up. That's how the friends parted, and the next morning, Mr. Reed left. The service was not expected to be easy, but Mr. Reed turned out to be ready for it. Obstacle courses, parachute jumps, and exhausting marches were easier for him than for most of his fellow soldiers. His beloved Evelyn's face appeared before his eyes at the most difficult moments, and it helped him to overcome them. And her warm letters warmed his soul when their unit was redeployed to one of the bases overseas as a peacekeeping contingent. In general, the duty was quiet, and the local people treated the military well. But one day, insurgents attacked the patrol that Mr. Reed was on. Several comrades-in-arms got killed and Mr. Reed was wounded in the leg and taken to the hospital. The operation was not very successful. Despite assurances from medics, he was never able to get rid of his limp. Soon, Mr. Reed was discharged from military service and returned to his hometown. The guy went directly to his beloved from the train station. Lately, he has not received any letters from her, but he thought that she just did not know his hospital address. However, the truth turned out to be bitter. Evelyn was pregnant as eloquently demonstrated by her large belly. Moreover, she was already the wife of another man, and her choice was more than more awful for Mr. Reed. The former bride had married his once best friend, Parker, with whom he had quarreled at his farewell party before the army three years earlier. Now, this mean man, who had laughed at Mr. Reed's desire to serve his country, had become a successful businessman, drove a fancy SUV, and lived in a mansion in the most prestigious part of town. Mr. Reed was so offended that he burst into tears. He had never expected such a meeting. He almost got drunk with grief, but the paratrooper's firm character helped him through the betrayal. However, another problem came. When he went to find a job, he realized that despite the honor and respect from the military, it was hard to get a good job because no one wants a lame worker when there were a lot of healthy, unemployed in town. It was unacceptable for Mr. Reed to live off benefits, so the man set up a small carpentry workshop in an empty garage to make and repair furniture. He had always liked this activity. He had completed a carpentry course before the army and even had time to work in a furniture factory for a while. Time flew by quickly. Now, Mr. Reed was 47. What has he achieved by this age? He became a respected master cabinet maker, although he did not get very rich. He had no so-called entrepreneurial spirit, he was a craftsman, not a businessman, and most importantly, he never got married. His former friend Parker, on the other hand, achieved great heights. According to rumors that reached Mr. Reed, he and Evelyn were doing well. They lived soul to soul and had two sons. On the day Mr. Reed was taken to the police station, he was taking a bus out of town when suddenly, at one of the stops, a couple of drunken young men piled into the passenger compartment. 
They immediately started talking loudly and without choosing their words. And when one of the passengers made a remark to them, they began clinging to people, knocking their bags out of their laps, pulling at their clothes, and breathing alcohol in everyone's face. One of the guys sat down next to a young girl and started to hit on her. Another one made faces at an elderly woman and verbally intimidating her by promising to take her bag of groceries. Mr. Reed could not watch this outrage for long and reprimanded the young man in a rather harsh form. One of the hooligans turned to him and smirked, promising Mr. Reed to throw him out of the bus if he said anything else. Mr. Reed couldn't stand such impudence. He got up from his seat and limped toward the hooligans. They clearly did not see the lame man as a threat to them and were confident that they could easily overpower him, especially the two of them. One of them immediately promised Mr. Reed to break his other leg and swung his fist. But the former paratrooper easily intercepted his arm, put it back behind his back, and his forehead against the back of the seat. The second troublemaker decided to help his friend and tried to kick Mr. Reed, feigning karate. However, Mr. Reed deftly caught his leg in the air and then tripped him on the other leg. The bully collapsed on the floor of the salon, hitting badly. When the two youngsters recovered from the first shock, tried to attack Mr. Reed simultaneously. He rewarded each of them with a good uppercut, sending them to a knockout. The paratrooper's real combat training, as it turned out, has stayed with him ever since. The bus passengers, who were silently watching, applauded Mr. Reed. He himself decided not to inflame the atmosphere any further and got off at the first stop. It was only a short walk home, but he did not manage to get there that day. A police car drove up behind him, got out, handcuffed him, and drove him silently to the station. Mr. Reed found out later that the young men in the bus were the sons of a local businessman and patron of the arts, and that respected businessman was Parker, his former school friend, who had stolen his fiancée. It was him that Mr. Reed had punched in the army for his snide remarks, and it was he who had now decided to get even with him for all the wrongs, promising the police a good reward if the veteran would answer for beating his sons to the fullest extent of the law. Mr. Reed realized more and more clearly with each hour he spent at the police station how serious his situation was. The police kept spinning the case along the lines that it was Mr. Reed, a trained man, who had fisted the defenseless young men and then fled from the scene without giving them first aid. At some point, Mr. Reed got tired of hearing all this and was ready to sign any protocols. But then some noise was heard from the street. The policeman looked out the window and could not believe his eyes. An imposing crowd of people was rippling on the square in front of the station, demanding the release of the veteran. As it turned out later, one of the bus passengers had been filming the incident on his cell phone during the brawl, uploading the footage onto the web. The entire country heard about the civilian heroic deed of the former paratrooper, who had stood in the way of the Boers, and the whole country united to defend him. The police were forced to release Mr. Reed and officially apologized to him. In addition, the police department was inspected by the Department of Internal Affairs after this outrageous incident. Several policemen were punished and some had to leave their jobs in a hurry. Mr. Reed was soon awarded the title of Honorary Citizen of the Town. Parker's sons received administrative fines, and after the trial, Evelyn went to Mr. Reed and apologized to him for her betrayal and her son's behavior. The man just looked at her and went home without saying a word. Life had already punished her with such shameless children, and anyway, he had not held a grudge against her for a long time. 